Hello! So, it's been a while. Um, I thought I'd give you an little update because it's been like three weeks now, I would say, since the last update. Um, since then, there's been a lot happening. A lot of progress has actually been made. Um, a lot of discoveries and actions have been taken. I've just finished round 13 of the ALA. Um, I upped my dose a little bit to 1.75, so I upped it by 75%. That went absolutely fine, I was so glad. Um, so it was only the last round that I upped the dose, but I didn't really have many different side effects other than the ones I've already had. Um, I think I'm probably in the dump at the minute, like, I think I've, I can't figure it out, like, but I think I'd been in the dump for at least a month. It's been five months exactly now that I've had my amalgams taken out, or five months tomorrow, but um, I do think that I've either been in the dump since like two weeks after the amalgams were taken out, or I just haven't had a dump, or I'm in it now from about a month ago where I was feeling really depressed, or I just haven't had a dump yet, and I'm hoping that's not the case, but Surely I would have felt like um, the dump like coming on even if it was just gradual so yeah I think I'm probably in it now um, if I am in it at all. I have had new side effects come up but they're not really bothersome at all. Um, things like the eye twitch, so this right eye has been twitching constantly for about a month and a half. Um, had acne appear like more. You can probably tell um, on my shoulders as well. A lot of spots going on. Um, brought them down. I've had what else? It's, it's like other strange little things that aren't bothersome whatsoever. Like I can live with them for the rest of my life happily. Um, I've had like a rash under, like on my stomach. Um, but I think that's because I've been doing cast oil packs with hot water bottle on top and I think the hot water bottle's been a bit hot and kind of burnt my stomach maybe. Um, oh yeah, my eyes have been really sore, like not so much now and I think I found out the reason for that as well was I think it's um, histamine levels. My eyes were really like crusty all the way around, especially in the corners when I woke up and they were really like stuck together and then sore, like stinging. Um, but what had been doing is I'd made up some fresh lemon juice and froze cubes of it and every day I'd been putting that in my water um, but I think that had been a bit too like acidic and strong I think it's kind of made things a bit um, sensitive so I stopped doing that two days ago and my eyes have actually been a bit better so I might have figured that one out um, I've had like a metal taste in my mouth when I'm off round again no big deal at all. It's actually quite a good sign that I, I'm kind of detoxing. Um, being a bit itchy, like again that's subsided when I've stopped taking as much lemon juice. And I've had a bit more of tinnitus, like the ringing in the ears at night time, but it's not really been a big deal. Other than those things, I've the main things I've just got is the derealisation and the anxiety. Um, they are just slowly, gradually subsiding, like, they will come back sometimes, but overall, like, it's kind of like up and down, but it is improving. Um, the, I had, a, like, since up my dose this week, I, I've had quite a few good days, really. Just kind of flatline normal days, um, like, where I'm able to just get on with the day and not notice anxiety or derealisation but then as soon as I do think about it it obviously comes back but I'm kind of hopeful that like the less I focus on what's going on then the more it'll just subside um, so I've been kind of doing more integrative um, detoxing and thinking about like other methods alongside the chelation therapy um, I, I did put the Lyme thing to bed and I did kind of think, you know, I'm not going to even look into it because even if I did have Lyme, like, chelation would 
build my immune system up strong enough to actually fight it off itself. But the issue is that when you've got heavy metal to toxicity and then you've got underlying Lyme disease or the co-infections, they kind of bring them, exasperate them because your immune system is suppressed so much by the heavy metals that it can't keep the Lyme or the bacteria at bay. And then you kind of start getting more symptoms. Like, I think a lot of people could have Lyme disease, but they just don't realise it because it's in remission. Um, you know, I, there is there isn't a lot of research, like especially with the NHS, about Lyme disease, and I would never talk about it with a doctor or anything like from the NHS. But I've decided that I'm gonna treat Lyme disease alongside chelation just in case. Um, I was tested negative for Lyme, but that was just like a Medichex anti um, antibody test and they don't, I've realised that they're not accurate whatsoever. But rather than pay, like paying a lot of money to get um, tests in, in Germany and stuff, I'm just going to treat it anyway because the protocol I was looking at is just like quite gentle it's not pharmaceutical, it's herbal, and I was thinking like, and it's not too expensive, so I just thought, well, I'm just going to like gradually work my way up on that as well. So it's the, I'm looking at the Buna protocol, um, there's also the Cowan protocol, there's other ones, but it just basically involves um, herbal tinctures, which are like antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, um, antibiotic, natural, um, solutions that kind of help fight the infection um, and help your body deal with it. I don't think Lyme ever goes away completely, I think it kind of just stays in your system and goes into remission for years like but doesn't give you symptoms. Like You can have Lyme disease and walk around feeling fine and good because your immune system is just keeping it in bay, it bay and under control. Um, but like I said my immune system has been trashed and I also I don't know if I mentioned in the last video, I got my mould mycotoxin test back and I had um, high levels of um, two different types of mould, penicillin and um, is it a or orcotoxin or something? Um, the penicillin one is weird because it was high but like it wasn't massively high but it was definitely at the end of the bar but I've seen other people's higher but that type of um, fungus actually suppresses your immune system and it, it's actually what is used by doctors to suppress the immune system to um, prevent the body rejecting kidney transplants so this um, mycotoxin in my body is suppressing my immune system even more so it's just been a perfect storm of things like I wish I could go back to myself um, this time last year and say like Sophie just don't waste your time trying to heal the depersonalization by like fixing the anxiety because your body is just in a constant um, fight or flight because you're fighting off different things and it knows something's wrong so just listen to it instead of being told that it's all in your head and it'll go away once the anxiety goes away. But then again, I would never have learned what I'd learned if I delved straight into healing. Um, and I'm actually really grateful for that experience because like, I can share it with other people because there'll be a lot of people out there who are really struggling with derealisation and think that, um, I mean, it, it sometimes can be the case that it's anxiety, obviously, but with some people don't realise that the body's so toxic that the brain's actually being compromised and you need to detox. Um, but yeah, I've, I've just been kind of dealing with everything possible so I don't rule anything out. Um, with the mould, so I, I don't know, I don't think the mould's coming from the house because I have inspected the whole house, I bought an air purifier, I bought a new washing machine because it had mould in it. Um, and then I actually got a drill and drilled into the cavity of my walls um, and got one of those scope things that you can feed through the cavity and looked with a camera and all there was there was just like insulation and I, I looked, I took a video, I took screenshots and you can see really clearly in the cavity 
doesn't look like there's any mould at all. Um, the next thing I do need to do is get up into my loft but I need a long pair of ladders and just kind of make sure there's nothing there and then I can just put the whole mould thing to bed because I think I said last time that I'd been living in a really mouldy um, flat a few years ago um, and I think that I've probably picked it up from there but it's not really been an issue because I hadn't like piled on other toxins as well um, like the mercury. I think the mercury's just basically been the, the straw that broke the camel's back. It's not even a straw, it's like a big log um, on top of other logs but I've been managing to cope okay until the mercury was added and it was like right let's just collapse. Um, I'm also in talks, so believe it or not, with my GP because I haven't mentioned any of this um, toxicity stuff but I did want to rule out um, encaphalitis and a possible pituitary cyst which is quite common. Um, I did want to make sure that I didn't have any of those going on you know during treatment so I could just focus on my treatment um, because if I leave things like that untreated like obviously it's not going to get better. So I managed to convince my GP to refer me to a neurologist to get an MRI um, just to rule anything out there because I've never had an MRI before. The only issue is I'm concerned that they're going to want to put the contrast in um, so I'm going to try and get them not to because I don't want the contrast dye put in because again that's another thing that I could react to which is toxic um, and I probably seem quite hyper vigilant and stuff but it's just because I am and I really want my body to heal the best it possibly can. Um, but yeah going forward I'm going to do another round of 1.75 then if that was the same as this one, I'm going to actually up it to 3 milligram, um, which is exciting. I'll do a couple of rounds at 3, see how I go, think about opening it to 5. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's going well, the chelation's definitely going well. Um, and I think I'll just kind of update you guys on every 3 rounds probably, because there's not really much going on in terms of the rounds and the chelation. Like, thank you God, <laughs> but there is things going on in my life alongside that, um, you know, like other treatments and I'm getting a sauna that's actually coming next month. I think I ordered it from Amazon, but I think it's quite like a international product. It's not from the UK, so it's gonna, it takes like a month to get here. So um, in March it should arrive and I'll start doing saunas every couple of days. Um, and I've also got some nasal spray for the antifungal to kill any mould as well. I'm also on a candida cleanse at the minute as well, which I'm taking like wormwood, um, black walnut, oil of oregano in like a capsule. Um, to start that three days ago, I think I had a little bit of like a die off reaction. I've been really gassy, I know it sounds gross, but I've been like, my balls have just been like going crazy. But I think that's a good sign because I think things are dying. So I'm just kind of treating everything really gently but from all ag angles and really integratively. Um, I feel like I could go to a, a doctor, like a functional medicine doctor and get so all sorts of treatments but I'm kind of doing okay like listening to my body and um, going slow and just researching a lot. Once I've put the Lyme thing to bed and just start treatment and being used to it, um, I'm going to stop looking on like groups as well because that gives me anxiety seeing people say like they've had depersonalization with like Bartonella and stuff and Lyme, which is really common. But then it's been quite nice to see people say, oh yeah, I went away with treatment. So yeah, I'm just going to combine everything and something will work but it's not been too bad like the realizations are not terrible it's like six out of ten um rather than it being like a nine out of ten sometimes it goes to a four or five um i can live with it although i do have like times where i'm thinking like oh my god like i feel so unreal and lost but it just it just fades away because i just think well 
right, I felt like this before and it goes away, so I just let this wait, and it's fine. Um, so I'm trying not to get like too stirred up about it because it just creates more stress. Um, once I've got used to the detox regime, I'm gonna kind of dissipate on the research and try and like forget about how I feel, but I'm also gonna start um, looking at ways to activate the parasympathetic parasympathetic nervous system, or is it this the Basically, the, the way your body heals is like you're either in fight or flight or rest and digest and you kind of go from one or the two. So if you're in permanent fight or flight, well, like constant, you have to realisation. So I'm going to try and get my body back into like rest and digest after I've kind of worked up all I can and then had a protocol that I'm following every week and then I'll just like drop it, um, drop the research and drop the efforts I'm making and then focus on like self-care and just keep doing the detox and I'm sure I'll be fine. I've also got an appointment next week with um, a private, what's he called? Um, what's the thyroid? Um, endocrinologist, do you know what I mean? Because um, my thyroid was borderline and I'm gonna see if he's gonna wanna put us on some thyroid medication or you know, see what he suggests. So that'll be another update that I'll give you. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping you're all right and just keep going. Um, if you want to know exactly what protocols I'm doing and what treatments I'm doing, then just leave me a comment and I'll let you know down below what my routine is every week because every week I do all sorts of set things. So, okay, thanks. Speak soon.